Hi, Emily here from Homemade Emily Jane. And today I am super excited to talk to you about quilt labels. I am going to share with you a tutorial for how to make an embroidered quilt label. But before we dive into the tutorial, let's talk about how and why to make a quilt label. So if you want to fast forward, use the chapters that you see listed here um, or in the description below and then you can fast forward just to the tutorial part if that's what you're looking for. I have a lot of this information also over on my blog, so if you wanna go through my article that I have written out, be sure to check the link in the description below and go visit my website from there. First, let's talk about why to make a quilt label. So historically, quilt labels have been made to preserve the history of a quilt. It definitely increases the value of a quilt when we know the story behind it, especially ones from long, long ago. So when we think of ourselves as quilters in history, we want to help our ancestors know the story behind the quilts that we are making. So that's one reason to put a label on a quilt. Another reason might be to just leave a special note or a message for the recipient of the quilt if you are making your quilt as a gift for someone. I love to give quilted gifts for baby showers, bridal showers, wedding gifts. So if you plan on giving away a quilt, making a special quilt label for the quilt is a really great idea as well. And you can include really sweet, sentimental, and very custom personalized information on that quilt label. Additionally, a different type of quilt label might just be a tag, such as your brand name with your logo on it if you are making a lot of quilts to sell. So that's one option too. So this brings me to talk about what to put on a quilt label. So a lot of the times the information that we will put on a quilt label is just there to tell a story. So we wanna think about the who, what, when, where, why, and how that goes into behind the quilt. So who made it, why it was made, where it was made, how you made it, what materials did you use, as well as if you wanted to really dive into the why, if you're giving it as a gift, then you might put a sentimental message, a quote or a note or even a Bible verse. I love to put scripture on my quilt labels as well. If you are looking for ideas for what to put on your quilt label for a special occasion quilt, such as a baby gift, a wedding gift, or even a memory quilt, I have a free PDF download that is packed with ideas and inspiration for what to put on your quilt label broken out by the type of occasion. So if you want that, make sure you check the description below for the link to get that download. It'll bring you to a landing page where you sign up for my email list and then you'll automatically be emailed the PDF. So be sure to check that out and let me know what you think. So let's dive into how to make a quilt label with an embroidery machine. The quilt label that I'll be making today is fairly simple. Earlier last year, I made this quilt, which is a scrappy version of my sprightly pattern, and I decided it was about time I put a quilt label on it. So I'm just gonna make a simple quilt label I'm using my embroider machine so that we can put a label on this scrappy sprightly quilt. First, let's cover some of the supplies that you'll need. Obviously, you will need some fabric, some embroidery thread, your embroidery machine. And then I also really like to use a hot ruler such as this one by Clover. It helps with pressing the corners and the edges under once we're done with the embroidery part. So I'll put links to all of the supplies that I'm using in the description below. For this particular quilt label, I'm going to be using fabric that matches the backing of the quilt so that the writing on the label really stands out. But you could use any fabric that coordinates with your quilt in whatever way you want. I do recommend having some contrast between the thread that you use and the fabric that you use. So either use a dark fabric and a light thread or a light fabric and a dark thread. In this case, I'm gonna use a darker blue fabric and white thread so that it really pops. And then of course, you'll also need stabilizer. I have tons of different stabilizers that I use, primarily either tear away or cut away. Um, for this example, I'm gonna be using a thin 
cut away stabilizer and honestly either one will work I consider myself still like kind of a beginner when it comes to embroidery as a whole because there is so much you can do with embroidery and the only thing I do is quilt labels so if you wanted to learn more about how to use your embroidery machine I definitely recommend checking out a quilt shop wherever you bought the embroidery machine from or other online tutorials for your specific model throughout this tutorial I will be using my Viking Brilliance 80 machine, which is a sewing machine and embroidery machine duo, and I really love it for both quilting and quilt labels. So um, the next step, once you have your fabric picked out, is to design your label, decide what you're gonna put on the label first, and then use your machine embroidery software to design your label with letters. So I'm using what is called Premier Plus 2, which is the Husqvarna Viking software. And I just type up what I want it to say and then I place it into the little computer software. And then I can send that design directly to my embroidery machine. So here is a little view at the embroidery software that I'm using. I'm just putting the name of the quilt made by me and then the year that I made the quilt. And that's all my label is going to say. So next I will send this design um, through my software over to my sewing machine. Once your design is done and already sent over to your sewing machine or saved to a USB, we can go ahead and put the technology away and it's now time to get our fabric ready. So you'll see here I have my embroidery hoop that I'm using for this design. This is one of my smaller hoops. It's about six inches square and that's going to be perfect for this label. And then I also have a piece of cotton fabric and a piece of stabilizer. So this is like a very thin flexible cutaway stabilizer that I'm using. And so next I'll just layer them on top of each other and put my fabric in the hoop. And just like that, I'm ready to go. So now I'll bring this over to my sewing machine. Now, different sewing machines will work differently, so I definitely recommend referring to your sewing machine's manual. I am using the Husqvarna Viking Designer Brilliance 80, and I'm gonna set it up to just start a new embroidery project. So I have tons of different options, and first I'm going to select my hoop size that I'm using. And then I will navigate to my designs that I've made and select the one that I just created, the Sprightly Quilt Label. So you'll see that it's not quite lining up. My design is too big for my hoop, so I'm just gonna make it a little smaller so that I can fit it inside my hoop. This is a really good opportunity to proofread everything for spelling because it would not be fun to wait for it to stitch out and then um, have to redo it. So once you are solidified on your design choice, just go ahead and hit go on your machine. This is also where I make sure that my machine is threaded. I'm using this white embroidery thread and an embroidery needle on my machine. And then in my bobbin, I have a pre-wound embroidery bobbin in here as well. Now, when I select my options, I have my small straight stitch hole plate on. I'm gonna do a monochromatic, and then I'll just go ahead and hit continue. Next, the machine brings my embroidery arm up towards me, and it's time to attach my hoop. So now I grab my hoop from earlier, and I just slide it in. Now, one thing I always do is I move the speed down to about the middle, and then I just go ahead and hit the start button. Once it's stitched out a few stitches, I like to trim off the little tail of thread. That's not necessary now, but it's something that I like to do. So I grab some small scissors and I just get right underneath there and snip. And then hit start again. Now from here, I just go ahead and take a little break while it stitches out. 
My screen tells me that I have 24 minutes left sewing at this speed, but if I change the speed, that number might adjust. So I'm just gonna let it stitch out and keep an eye on it. When your embroidery is finished, your machine might give you a little pop-up to let you know. So you can just go ahead and click OK. Next, take, take your hoop out of the machine and you can actually take your fabric out of the hoop as well. So when you're done, your label might look something like this. Next, we're gonna go trim these little threads and get it ready to put on our quilt. So now I'm gonna trim these little threads off I like to use these curved scissors. You can tell there's just a slight curve right here. Um, and they're made by Havels. I'll put a link to them in the description below as well. And I just get the little tiny threads that were cut by the machine. Once your threads are all snipped, it's time to grab your rotary cutter and a ruler to trim the excess fabric off of your label. But keep in mind, we do need a half inch of seam allowance. So I'm gonna start off by trimming off the bottom. I like to go about two inches away from the letters of the label. So here you'll see my letters are right here and then I'm gonna have two inches down and I'll trim it right there. And then I'll do the same thing for the top of the label as well. And next we're gonna trim off the sides. For the sides, I tend to do an inch and a half, but you can do an inch and a half or two inches or anywhere in between, as long as it's the same on both sides. So I'll start off by doing it at two inches and then I'll see how it looks. And to make it square, we wanna pay attention to how we're trimming the top and the bottom should be straight lines on your ruler as well. So now we have our label. The next step is if you're using tear away or cut away interfacing, it might change. But what I'm going to do, because I'm using cut away interfacing, is hold this back and just cut off a half inch on all four sides like this. And this does not have to be precise, but you wanna be careful not to cut your fabric. So once you've cut all four sides, one side of your label will look like that, and one side will look like this. Now we will take our label over to our ironing board and press all four sides so that we have seam allowance. Now, before I start pressing, I wanted to show you, I do have some threads on the back that could use some trimming. When I have a dark fabric and a light thread, it really isn't gonna be a problem or show through, but if you're doing a darker thread on a light fabric, you'll definitely wanna trim some of these really unruly threads on the back, just the really, just the really long ones. Don't worry about making it look super pretty. The back of embroidery normally doesn't look real great, so that's totally okay. I just trimmed off some of the excess threads. And now this is when using a ruler like this one comes in really handy because I can use the half inch guideline with my iron. So I line this up and then I fold it over and then I grab my iron and I press it down right as at that half inch line. And then once it's kind of started to get pressed, I'll go ahead and take the ruler out and press it nice and flat with my iron. Once one side is done, go ahead and rotate it, bring your ruler back and do the next side. Now this also might be a good time to use best press or spray starch right at that corner 
to get it nice and crisp. Once we have one corner down, we'll go ahead and just keep rotating our way around the label. So next we'll do this short end. And we repeat this process until all four sides are flat and all four corners are crisp. Now we'll flip it over and we can go ahead and press from the front side as well. And then th this is also another opportunity to use best press again on the sides and the corners. Now I will say I don't like to do a ton of pressing directly on the embroidery stitches. I'll just do it lightly here and there, but I don't like to get it too hot because it is a synthetic material. Embroidery thread is typically made out of polyester or rayon. Um, so it has different heat um, temperatures than cotton. So that's just something to keep in mind, not to hold a hot iron on top of the stitching for a very long period of time. Now, once you're done pressing, you should have the half inch fold over on all four edges. And next we can talk about how to sew this one onto the back of your quilt. Once your quilt label is done, it'll look something like this. Next, we can talk about how to stitch this onto the back of your quilt. So go ahead and grab your label and grab some pins and then of course grab the quilt that you're putting the label on. I'm gonna pin it in place in the corner and after pinning it, we have two options. We can either use our sewing machine, um, just a regular straight stitch or even a blanket or a zigzag stitch or something decorative to stitch around all four edges. Um, that is going to be the sturdiest way to keep your label on the quilt, but it will show up on the front side of the quilt. You'll be able to see the stitches. So if you don't want that, then you can hand stitch it. And that's the method I'm going to show you today. I'm going to do this one just with some invisible hand stitching. So now I have my quilt. The back side is facing me and I have my quilt label and I'm going to arrange it in the corner of my quilt. I'm gonna leave maybe an inch or two away from the edges, but where you place it is totally personal preference. And then I'm going to pin it in place using just regular pins. You could also use magnets here. If you like to use sewing magnets, that's an option as well. But I'm just gonna do four pins, one at each corner. I'm not too concerned about the edges of the label coming out because they're nice and crisp. So now that the label is in place, I'm going to hand stitch it down. So next I will grab some hand stitching thread and then a sewing needle. So typically you would use a thread that matches either your label or your backing fabric so that it can kind of blend in. But for this tutorial, because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm gonna use this super light and strong. It's called Deco Bob 80 Weight by Wonderfill. And this is one of my favorite hand quilting thread types because it is so thin. Being 80 weight, it's super, super thin and blends in really well with pretty much anything. And we will see how this like silver color blends in with my navy fabric. But, and then I'm just using a real simple hand stitching needle. So go ahead and thread your needle. And then I also have a thimble as well that I'm going to use because my finger will get tired. I'm gonna start off by tying a couple knots in one end of the thread. This thread is super thin, so I'm gonna tie three knots to give it a big enough thing to hold on to my fabric with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start at this corner and pull, put the thread through the corner of the label fabric. And then we'll come down into the actual quilt back as well. And for this, we just want to grab the fabric and the quilt backing and some of the batting, but we don't want it to come all the way through the front. So be careful as you're doing that. And then I'm gonna bring it back up really close to where I just was, loop it almost all the way through, and then bring my needle back through that loop to tie a knot. That'll just make it a little extra secure. So now I have a knot here holding it in place 
and then I'm going to just do a simple um, invisible stitch. This might also be what you use to bind your quilt. So go ahead and put your needle down into the batting and then back up where the label is and grab just a little bit of the label here. And then we'll use our finger to push the needle through. And then we'll repeat that stitch all the way across the bottom of the label. So you'll see as I'm going, I've sewn a couple inches here and you can kind of see, I don't know if this is showing up on the camera as well, but you can kind of see my thread popping through. That's okay. Um, if I pull the thread a little tighter, it tends to hide a little better. But if you're using a thread that matches your fabric, it won't be noticeable at all. And then when we show you the front of the quilt, we don't see any of those stitches. So you can keep doing that stitch all the way around the quilt label to attach it to the quilt. When you get to the corner, I like to make sure that I put a stitch right in the corner of the label. So I'm gonna stitch down next to it and then come up right at that little corner, push it through, and then I'm gonna put a stitch down right near the corner into the backing. And that's how I'm gonna make sure that the corners get um, nice and solid. And then as I rotate the quilt, I'm just going to keep stitching across this seam. As we begin to round the corner to start stitching on this seam across the top and this side, it becomes harder to hold the quilt. So I wanted to show you how I hold the quilt while I'm stitching. I bunch it up here and then I use my, my right hand to do the stitching, but I just really bunch it up in between my fingers and then the fingers of my left hand are right back here to support my stitching. So I'm gonna continue this method all the way across. Before your thread tail gets too short, let's go ahead and put that stitch down and then carry it over underneath where the label will be and pull it back up. So now we kind of have it inside where the backing is and I'm gonna tie a knot here. So I'm gonna pull that thread tight and then tie a knot into the backing of the quilt. And then I can go ahead and tuck that thread in or I can snip it off. But we're gonna start a new thread right next to this stitch here. So now I'll go ahead and thread my needle with a new piece of thread. And then I'm going to tie another knot in here to um, start off this piece. So inside the, the seam, inside the backing, but near the stitching, I'm just gonna stick it in, pull it out, and then leave a short tail here, and then repeat and tie this in a knot. I can tell it's not quite tight, so I'm gonna do that one more time. Once it's tight, we're ready to just continue stitching. Put this needle back up through the label, grabbing just a tiny bit, and then I'll be able to continue my stitching across. Every couple of stitches or so, Go ahead and lay it out flat. Make sure that that seam is still going straight and then readjust your grip with your left hand or your non-dominant hand. Now, once you get to the very end of stitching on the label, you're at your final corner that you've already stitched on. This is probably the trickiest part for me when doing the invisible stitch because you don't have anywhere to hide your knot as well. But I'll just come back in up through the bottom and find that first stitch that I did 
and try to tie a knot around that first stitch or um, next to it. So I'll just stick my needle in real close to that first stitch and then tie a knot right at the corner and I'll reinforce that a couple times. Go ahead and stitch that thread back down through and then kind of keep your needle in between your batting layer and just kind of bring it maybe an inch away. And then we're gonna trim our thread um, from this little spot over here. So we have our end of our thread is buried inside the quilt and we are done stitching on our label using an invisible stitch. So you can kind of see my stitches here because I used a contrasting thread. But if you're using a thread that matches, your stitches really shouldn't be all that visible. Thank you so much for joining me as we made the quilt label for my Sprightly Quilt. I hope you found this tutorial useful and insightful and that you now have the confidence to make your own quilt label using your embroidery machine and stitching it on by hand. If you want more information about this quilt, um, I actually use this exact quilt for a tutorial about big stitch hand binding. So if you were admiring my binding throughout the video, be sure to check out this video above and it'll teach you exactly how to do that step of making a quilt. If you want more quilting tips, tricks, and inspiration, be sure to check out homemademilyjane.com and of course subscribe here on YouTube. Happy sewing!